It's the holy grail of renewables, storing energy when it's produced to use it when it can't be generated. Could technology over 200 years old hold the key? We're talking about the simple battery. Well, not quite so simple. These ones take us into the space age. Professor Jay Whitaker worked for NASA before starting his next generation battery company. It took me a while to make the full transition from uh, sort of these small niche kind of applications for spacecraft where I was still doing energy things, but it was for, you know, things that were sort of not widely used to something that was for this planet, for the masses. And when I came to Carnegie Mellon, I decided to really examine the biggest possible problems that I could find. And this was one of them, stationary energy storage. And powering Jay's batteries? A substance found in abundance all over the world, salt water. What was missing though was a environmentally benign, low cost, sort of dumb battery that's not very energy dense, that would never be used for transportation, that's tailored for a long duration, many cycle kind of application like solar or wind. Using water seemed like a good idea, using sodium seemed like a good idea, and then finding the right materials that could function with uh, a salt water kind of environment uh, was a year long process. Jay's research developed into a company called Akian, producing high performance, safe, sustainable, and cost effective battery energy storage. And they're not only cheap, the team estimates the sales could last up to 10 years longer than comparative battery technologies. We have to find a way to grow uh, energy availability around the world without negatively, further negatively impacting our environment. This means we have to use renewable energy sources. If you use those and you don't want to have diesel generators to fill in the gaps because renewables are inherently intermittent, you got to have some way to, to buffer, store the energy. Just like the internet stores data, you have to figure out how to store electrons so that you can use them at the right time when you need them. Some of Jay's NASA work may leave on Mars via the rover project, but it's his recent work that could have a greater impact right here on planet Earth.